What time did you get to bed, Johnny? Well, um, I got home at 7 a.m. <laughs> We had to, uh, we had to, buddies of mine flew me home, but we had to wait for uh, two hours and 24 other planes took off before, uh, before we did. Private jets? Yeah, yeah, but uh, nonetheless, uh, I'm home. How would you compare this Game 7 with any other one that you saw? And certainly you were involved in one of the great ones. A lot of people look at that Game 7 as the greatest Game 7 with Minnesota and the Braves. Yeah, it's, it, it was it was a weird game seven. The reason I say that is because the game was well in hand for the Chicago Cubs. I mean, a five-run lead, and you're trying to figure out how does Cleveland get back in it. Um, you know, this is a game where Hendricks has got it well in hand and, 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 and cruising. I mean, and then to have him come out when he did, um, those two runs with two outs on a wild pitch, you could sense that Cleveland uh, not only felt they had a heartbeat, but they were going to be in a situation where they're going to see Chapman and they're going to see him for multiple innings again, possibly. And uh, ultimately, that again, two outs. I can't, I've never seen a game in a series where two outs, nobody on, and so many things had happened. <laughs> it started in Game One with Lester, two outs, nobody on. He get he gets a runner on, then a stolen base, and two walks, infield hit, and hits Batsman, and that game went the Cleveland way, and and that kind of was the theme of, of the series. You know, don't take anything for granted, but also how hard it is to get three outs in an inning. And you know, I I don't know why. I mean, I personally don't know um, why some of the starters have been yanked as quickly as they did, and we've come to find out it's the first World Series ever that no starter pitched more than six innings on either team. And it, it, it caught up in so many different ways when you have to keep going to the well, so many ways to not trust other guys. And it, it, it turned into a classic, but it really, in my mind, should have never gotten there. Uh, but it did, and, and, and drama and, and storyline certainly played out, and it was crazy. If the Cubs had lost, what would we be talking about today? Well, any, much like any other Game 7, we'll be talking about a certain strategy and certain moves. I, I, I think, again, from the onset, when, when you start squeezing outs and squeezing scenarios to either steal outs or it started really with Game 6 for me. I mean, Hendricks, two outs, questionable call, gets a walk, and they take him out, and we're forced to see Chapman uh, a lot earlier than you want to. And, 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 yeah, I get it. I mean, the Cubs had to win that game but um you know the starter has a role in it and it's been taken away lately just by the the philosophy of baseball you know got to go to the bullpen got to go to your bullets got to use this guy we're 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 almost such a copycat league yeah. and catering to the questions that a manager has to ask or answer um that he's asked i, I think that's what you're seeing and so Use the guy. Use your best guy. Don't be left without using your guy. It started almost with the wild card game with Baltimore, and then we full, come full circle with Miller throwing more pitches and more innings he ever did, and Chapman doing the same thing. And by the last time, each guy was hittable. Each guy was normal. When they were unhittable, used in the form that um, gave them the best chance to be successful. He's John Smoltz joining us, Dan Patrick Show. But I also wonder if Joe Madden looked at what Terry Francona was doing with his bullpen and decided to do the same with Aroldis Chapman. Or do you think he had well, that planned you know, out? Uh, but, I mean, in game six, when the game got out of hand, it was an easier game to manage for Terry Francona. He was saving all his bullets for game seven, where yes. Joe couldn't. And I think when you line it up, it was a four-inning race to who can get the lead, the you know, Kluber was not as good as he he's, has been, and, and how can you blame him? Three starts in a series. First time ever he's not struck out one guy. So the Cubs did some things within each series that they played that adjusted and made adjustments to get back in the series and win it. They did it in each one. 
And I give them credit. You know, they, they stretched it out. They used more of their weapons and balance that they had that Cleveland just didn't have the luxury of having. Yeah, they had more depth there, and uh, I thought that, that came to fruition. The rain delay felt like it was a godsend for the Cubs that allowed them to hit the reset button. What did you think at the time? Yeah, it's weird because I thought it would have gone the other way. You know, I'd have thought it would have created more um, pressure on them and more time to think of, oh, my gosh, we had this. But it did. Hmm. It kind of went the other way and, and, and reset the focus, uh, the momentum of Cleveland. And, the, you know, Shaw was out there and, and in rhythm. And certainly at home, you love your chances anytime you can get to a ninth inning tied, yet alone an extra inning game. So Cleveland had this relentless will that their manager basically has for them and and um you know they they certainly had every reason to maybe not fold up the tents but understandably face chapman with three run deficit and needing four outs i mean in the end madden got what he wanted he got to pitch chapman four outs with a three run lead the problem is he had to go to him so much yeah. the last two and three games that it ultimately caught up. You uh, pointed out you don't want to throw something down and in to Davis, and then Chapman so <laughs> throws something down and in, and then he hits a home run there. I, I couldn't understand for the life of me that that kind of pitch. Certainly, I didn't think he could hit it out, but you know that that's what was. I don't know if he felt comfortable with his fastball. Thought more, you know, felt more comfortable with his slider. Can you explain that pitch? What would happen is, look, he he. He was fatigued, and when you're fatigued, you lose location. Oh, anything over the strike zone and up, nobody has a chance against Chapman. Yeah. And he was trying to, what I think, force velocity when he never has to force velocity. And when you're when you're a little bit run down, you lose your location, and it's the one out of twelve spots that you can't go to, and it's the one out of whatever the odds are that Davis had a chance to drop the barrel of the bat. And as a pitcher, and I've always said this, having been through so many of those games, you've got to be aware of that. You've got to, you've got to understand the moment cannot get away from you, and you've got to focus on the one thing. You can't give the guy – and it just happens. I mean, I don't blame – look, Chapman was almost heroic in the sense that this guy battled – through three straight games of, of pitches and, and quantities never gone through. Um, and, and so you're out there grinding away, and it just happened to be the one area that he couldn't afford to, to throw it to. And, and I got to applaud Davis for being ready. I mean, you got to get a little lucky, and that's what I said. Yeah. You got to get a little lucky against a guy like this that throws that hard. You hope it's there, you trust it's going to be there, and you react. Congrats, John. I thought it was really well done. I thought uh, I, I don't know how nervous you were, but uh, I thought you were as good as the series was. So, uh, well done. I appreciate it, Dan. Thanks a lot. All right, get some sleep. Thank you, John. That's uh, John Smoltz, MLB on Fox. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience. <laughs> 